hopefully you all have um, had a chance to look up here and see. If you would like to follow along with the PowerPoint, um, it is available right there, tinyurl.com and then slash Pope Junior Info. So if you wanted to pull that up on your device and um, follow along with that today, you can. Uh, the PowerPoint, along with the handout, is posted on the Pope Counseling webpage on that page. So when you go to this webpage, there are several links and downloads and things you can get to. We also have the junior lesson, which is very similar to this PowerPoint that I'm going to go through. We um, did junior lessons over a period of two days um, a few weeks ago and covered a lot of information for your students to start thinking about how to prepare themselves and start thinking about beyond high school. There's a lot of information to cover with this type of planning and, and we wanted students to go ahead and start thinking about this and we want you to start thinking about this um, and then so the first day was a lot of giving a lot of good information which of course we're going to cover that today but then uh, the second day we actually had them get on the computers and do uh, some called college research using Naviance um, I'm going to show you a little bit about that um, tonight as well but they saved some colleges in their profiles when you meet with your counselor individually and do your junior advisement appointment, that's definitely something for you guys to have a conversation about, um, possibly um, look, at, look at those schools, see if they're appropriate. But we want everybody to be on the same page. That's, that's the intent of tonight. And then when junior advisement lessons, or when you meet in your junior advisement meetings, we want you to be able to use the information that you learn here, maybe do some individual research based on the res um, resources that I'm giving you tonight and come prepared with some good questions and, and things that are pertaining directly to your student. So that's the intent, um, kind of a flipped lesson. Give you the information up front and one big thing, and then when we do the individual, you can um, dig down and, and hopefully get some more personalized help. Okay, so hopefully you got a postcard in the mail. We sent out um, postcards um, a, week, a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, inviting you to a junior advisor appointment. Uh, hopefully you know who your child's counselor is. Um, we are assigned, like I said, based on alphabet. Um, and so uh, there are instructions on those postcards. If you do need to reschedule your appointment, you can do that. Um, so just follow the instructions, go to the Pope Counseling webpage. Actually, that same webpage right here has the reschedule link as well. So you can just find the appropriate counselor and um, reschedule your appointment that way, okay? Okay, so, like I said, I'm Jamie Hamrick. I'm the end of the alphabet. So. All right, so what we're going to do today, um, and, and by the way, let me just say this. If, if you don't mind, hold off on questions until the end. I've got a lot of information to cover, um, and I know you guys always come up with great questions, and I do want to help answer those questions for you. I just want to make sure I get through the material, and then at the end, we can definitely have time for Q&A. Um, but I also don't want to keep you until 9 o'clock either. I don't think you want to do that. Okay. All right. So we are going to go through post-secondary options. We are, I am going to talk a little bit about work options, military, um, because we recognize there are students in our school that have lots of different um, aspirations and lots of different um, career pathways that they may pursue. Okay. Um, the majority of what we're going to talk about, though, will be the college application process because it is a very detailed, complicated, can be complicated process. It doesn't have to be. Um, especially if you start early and start, start using the time that you have now. Um, so we're going to go over some overviews of, of, of steps, requirements. We're going to talk about testing, deadlines that you may hear, um, paying for college. I'm going to spend some time on that. Um, and then we're going to talk about building a college list and using some great resources that um, we, we run across. And you have probably run across some excellent resources that you like yourself. Everybody kind of has their favorite websites that they use. Um, but I've given you um, a handout with some great resources. Um, but then, uh, um, specifically, Naviance, GA Futures, and then our college planning toolkit that we have on the counseling webpage. So, um, options after high school. Some of this information is going to be, you're like, yeah, I know this, I get this. But I want you to know what we've told the students, okay? Um, so, options after high school, you can go right into a work environment. You can study and, and become an apprenticeship, an apprentice in um, a particular kind of trade program. You could definitely go to the military. We always have a number of students who pursue that pathway. Specialty schools like culinary um, programs or um, artistic type programs. Uh, technical colleges, two-year or community colleges. There are a lot of different terminologies. Um, 
two year JUCOs, community college, junior college, and then four year colleges and universities. So um, we, we help to define what work, going into work fields, trades, apprenticeships might look like for students. Um, these are usually trades or crafts. A lot of times students can go into these fields with um, just a little bit of training, just find someone that they can apprenticeship with. Um, but things like electrician, plumbing, firefighter, these kind of things, you can connect with someone and give you some training. Sometimes it does require some technical um, training at a technical college. Um, and there's uh, different levels of education you can get for those types of careers. Oh. Okay. Um, okay, so just a few websites that we've discovered because it's kind of hard to find information about trades and apprenticeships sometimes. Um, who needs Micro? You guys know who Micro is, right? Okay. He is a huge proponent of trying to encourage people to go into trade careers because there's a big skills gap right now. Um, if you haven't heard, there are people who are retiring and leaving the workforce and trades and there's nobody coming into backfill. So there is a big gap. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of information out there. He is a huge proponent. He has this website for Family Disconnected. Um, and there's a video there. If you guys want to watch the video, I'm not going to show you the video today. Um, but if you want to watch the video, it's micro expounding as he does on um, the, the belief the absurd belief that a four-year degree degree is the only path to success. The skills gap is here. If we don't close it, it'll swallow us all. So we want to remove that stigma of going into trade fields. So um, we've got some resources here. Georgia Trade 5. There are five industries um, that this particular uh, website um, created by the state of Georgia um, is trying to promote. Um, get energy into Georgia, specifically energy um, fields. Um, Career Training Base is a good website that I found. It was company one that has um, some free vocational training opportunities. I'm going to talk a little bit more about some opportunities within the state of Georgia a little bit later um, with regards to the HOPE, um, HOPE program. So military and military academies, and our, those are two very different, can be two very different things, um, but I, I put those on this one slide. Um, so I've just got the web addresses for all the different branches of the military. We always have military recruiters that come here to Pope and talk to our students. They, the Marines love to give this, get the students out there doing chin-ups. They have this contraption and the kids will do chin-ups. Boys love to get out there and compete with each other. Um, but there's a lot of good opportunities with the military um, for um, obtaining careers right out of high school, going into ROTC and college, and then going into the military. There are scholarships available. Um, and that's something you definitely speak with your counselor about individually if that's um, something that your student is interested in. Um, the ASVAB is a test that the military offers to help plug students into particular careers. It's a, it's a career and skills-based assessment. We offer it We offer it on the day of the PSAT, so some of your students may have taken the ASVAB, and we do have um, the results that come back. So ask your counselor about that, and we can share those with you. Um, but we usually try to offer it again in February. Um, so I was talking with Ms. Sachs, the, the counselor who usually sets up the ASVAB. But the ASVAB is not just for students who want to do military. Um, it's, it's a good resource for any, anybody. I took the ASVAB when I was in high school. And um, of course, you get some phone calls sometimes. But it's good data. Um, it's good information. It, it can help plug you into some career field interests, um, help you kind of narrow that down, because it does have that skills piece which a lot of career assessments don't have. Um, um, military Academy, I don't know if any of your students are interested in military academies, but I would encourage you to speak with your counselor about that as quickly as possible. Um, there is a pretty lengthy and involved nomination process you have to go through, so we can kind of walk you through that and give you some resources. We actually just got something in on email recently about the Air Force Academy. Um, it was just this week, so if you have specific questions about that, send us an email, we'll, we'll send you that information. So we defined college for students at this point because sometimes kids get really confused about what the different types of colleges exist out there. So um, first we talked about technical colleges. These are schools like Chattanooga Tech, um, where students might go for one to two years, if that, maybe just a few months in some circumstances. 
and they um, earn a certificate or a diploma. Um, TAPTAC also does have some associate's degree programs, which are the two-year degree programs. Uh, you only have to have a high school diploma or a GED to be admitted, and they do have a placement test for admission. You don't have to submit SAT or ACT scores for um, a technical college. You can take their placement test called the AccuPlacer, um, and they're not looking for a minimum GPA. Um, they just want to see that the student has graduated from high school. Um, there are some HOPE opportunities. I'll talk about those in a little bit, um, a little bit more in detail, but you can get some HOPE money for technical colleges, and there's no GPA requirement for the HOPE money that goes along with um, technical colleges. Uh, Two-year colleges, community, JUCOs, junior college. I had a student say, what's a JUCO? The other day in my office, I was like, oh, I need to add that to my to my list of other things you can call community colleges. So uh, these schools focus on offering associate's degrees or two-year degrees, um, and a lot of students will start at a, at a community college and then transfer on to a four-year college, but there are programs that you can study at, at a two-year college and, and go right out into the workforce after earning that associate's degree. Um, in the state of Georgia, you do have to have a 2.0 minimum core GPA. I'll talk a little bit more about core GPA in a minute. Um, you will need to take the SAT or ACT. There are some community colleges that will accept the Accuplacer as well, um, but most of them want to see some SAT or ACT scores. Um, there's again some hope opportunities for uh, community colleges and uh, schools around in our area that are that are the two-year colleges. Um, Georgia Perimeter and Georgia State recently merged. Um, most people. Uh, most people should have heard about that by now. Um, but it's now Perimeter College at Georgia State. Um, I think that's what they're calling themselves now. And then Georgia Highlands is a local two-year college. Their main campus is in Rome, but they have several satellite campuses throughout the state. And they actually have one of their satellite campuses on the Marietta campus of Kennesaw State University, the Southern Poly campus. So it's a very close option for our students. So we, we sometimes will have students look at George Highlands. And they also um, have access to a dorm there, which is kind of neat for students who might be looking for a two-year option that they could also live on campus. And they would actually be, be living on that Marietta KSU campus. So that's, that's a neat opportunity for our students. Um, four-year colleges. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about that today. Okay. So four-year colleges, we just defined. You can get bachelor's degrees. That's kind of a... The general degree that kids are thinking of when they think about a college degree, that four-year college bachelor's degree. Um, master's degree, we said, okay, that's, that's usually going to be about two years, two more years, and then a doctorate degree is usually four additional years. Um, the GPA and the test scores for four-year colleges are going to vary all over the place. You guys probably know this. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, you do have to be eligible for the HOPE scholarship to get HOPE funds at a four-year college in Georgia. And gaining admission into four-year colleges can include other things other than test scores and GPA requirements. You may need to submit essays. You may need to submit recommendation letters. Um, all these holistic details that we talk about, um, that, that's one thing that we wanted to drive home to students is that just because you graduate from high school doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get into the college of your choice. The requirements and the, the minimums for these schools can vary wildly. So we just went over the basic steps to apply to college. We're going to talk about this more their senior year, but we just wanted to give them kind of a, a quick overview. Um, to start off by making a list of potential colleges and schools, we did that with them on that day two of their lesson. Um, they need to know what their, their, fresh, their profile is, their academic profile, their GPA, their test scores. Where are their numbers following so that they know kind of the range of schools and, and um, and be able to categorize themselves in, in a particular um, category of schools. Uh, and then review the college requirements to submit a complete application. Going onto the college website, looking to see and finding that checklist of what's required for that college. Does this college need recommendation letters? Does this college need essays? Does this college need me to submit a resume or is it part of the application? So um, you're always going to have to submit an online application. You're always going to have to pay some kind of a fee. There can be fee waivers um, for students who have free or reduced lunch. Um, you have to submit an official transcript from the counseling office. They have to come into the counseling office to request this. Again, we're going to talk more about that senior year. Um, we don't want to give too much information that's not quite relevant yet. Um, test scores, SAT, ACT, those scores need to come directly from the testing agency. Um, we don't send those from the counseling office. Um, and then recommendations if needed. We're going to talk about that more. 
a little bit later, um, essays if needed, and then supplemental items. Sometimes school uh, students might be applying to a school that needs an interview or an audition or a portfolio of their artistic um, work. So we talked about what factors colleges consider. Probably the most important thing are grades. Um, a lot of people think it's the SAT or ACT, but, but colleges across the board will say the college, the high school transcripts, the grades that the student has earned in those classes, whether or not they've taken challenging classes, that's a really important thing to colleges. That's the history of the student's academic progress and how well they've done throughout the entirety of their high school career. Um, and then almost all schools are going to want to see SAT and ACT scores. Uh, there is a list of schools on fairtest.org of schools that do not require the SAT or ACT. Um, there are more and more of those popping up. Um, that they, they call those test optional schools. That means they're looking more holistically at students um, and not necessarily tying them to a test score. So if you have a student that might not be the best test taker, but you know they're an intelligent student and they do well in school, this might be something to explore with them. Um, most public Georgia colleges will calculate a core unweighted GPA. Again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but um, the majority of colleges in Georgia are just really looking at, at that number and then maybe test scores. Um, I'm not talking UGA, I'm not talking Georgia Tech, I'm talking about the other schools that you typically hear about in Georgia, KSU, Georgia Southern, and North Georgia. Um, usually the mid to low range schools are just looking at those numbers. If they're not asking for um, essays, recommendation letters, they're really just going to look, okay, most of the time, do you meet the minimum requirements? If you do, you'll probably be admitted, no problem, okay? So that's kind of a little key thing you could be looking for there. Uh, Four-year colleges are going to want to see at least two years of the same foreign language. Some selective schools want to see more than that. Um, there are some schools that require um, more than that, but we always tell students and families, please look at those college websites and, and ask the admissions reps, ask questions. Um, are there any exceptions? You know, can you do two of one language and one of another? You know, ask those types of questions. Those are good things to just double check with them. Rigor. Um, again, the more competitive colleges want to know, well, have you, you might have a 4.0, but what's that in? Very difficult classes, like honors and AP classes, or was it in all-level classes? Were you choosing to take the more rigorous option when you had the choice? You know, these are questions that, that the super competitive, more competitive colleges want to know, because it helps to give them an idea about how good the preparation that student has had and how well they're going to be ready um, to enter college and um, be ready for the rigors of college. Uh, resume information, um, I'm going to talk about uh, we encourage the students to start working on resumes, and Naviance is a way to do that. Um, but just start making a list. I think now is a great time to start doing that if they haven't already. Of thinking back, what are all the things that I've done each year? I've been in high school and listing those things out, and maybe thinking about how they may have contributed to to organization or an opportunity. These are these are good things to have in in mind already. Some kids get to senior year and they're having to fill out their application and they come to this section where they're having to enter in all of this information and it, it's, it stops them in their tracks because they have to think through all the different things that they've done and it can it can kind of be, you know, laborious. So um, that's a good thing to be working on right now. Um, more competitive schools, I've said this already, but they're going to be digging more into the holistic information. At the really, really competitive colleges, a lot of times this, all the students who are applying to these really competitive colleges are really fantastic students. So their grades, their GPA, their test scores, they're all going to be really high. Well, a college can't admit all of them, so they have to winnow down the field by looking at those extra pieces and say, okay, well, of all these wonderful kids we have, how are we going to narrow down the field to take the ones that are truly the best in our eyes? Okay, and that can be different from school to school who the best is. Okay, um, so when applying for scholarships, all of this information that I've been talking about, it, the higher the better. Okay, the, the more the better, the more impressive the better when you're competing for scholarships because everybody wants money. Um, okay, so talking about GPA cal um, calculations, this is a thing that always strips people up. We always get a lot of people confused about this. Um, the Pope GPA on the Pope transcript, there are two of them. One of them says weighted GPA, the other one says unweighted GPA. I have been petitioning the county for years to ask them, please put weighted 
overall GPA, an unweighted overall GPA, because that's the kind of GPA that is. People think it's a core GPA, English, Math, Science, Social Studies, Foreign Language. Neither of those GPAs are simply a core GPA. They include the electives as well. So when you're looking at the Pope transcript, it's rare that any college is going to just take that GPA directly off of the Pope transcript. Almost always will they recalculate it just using the core classes, because those are the classes that are going to indicate to them if the student is prepared for college or not. Um, electives, you know, we know electives are valuable, but for colleges, it's those academic courses that are really going to tell them if the student's prepared for college level work. Okay, so um, they may or may not give weight to AP and honors classes. We at Pope give weight. Um, that's how our ranking is determined. But colleges, they may not use the same calculation we do. Okay. For example, UGA gives AP classes only a one extra quality point. They don't give anything for honors. They don't give anything for dual enrollment, just AB. Um, the majority of Georgia colleges don't give any weight at all. Kennesaw State takes an unweighted core GPA. So a, th a B is a three. An A is a four. A D is a one. Okay. Um, now, Alabama and Auburn take the GPA directly off the transcript. They are one of the more unusual, those are two of the more unusual um, examples. The University of South Carolina weights honors and AP the same. So every college is going to approach that differently. I tell the kids, this is a really good question to ask an admissions rep. How do you calculate the GPA at your college? Do you use core classes? Do you give weight to anything? This is a great way for them to engage in conversation with those admissions reps so that you know, we, we want to teach them networking skills, right? We all know how important networking is. So, great question. And again, down there at the bottom, it's a little hard to see, but remember that neither GPA on the transcript is core GPA, okay? Um, let's talk SAT and ACT. I'm not going to go through this little chart here. You can, you can get it on the, um, the PowerPoint. We are going to give you a, a great handout in junior advisement that, that um, goes through the differences between the SAT and the ACT. But, but junior year is the time to start thinking about taking the SAT in or ACT. Um, the websites are up there, actstudent.org, or if you just go to act.org, that works as well. Um, and then SAT dot collegeboard.com. I usually just type in collegeboard.com and it comes right up. Um, students who um, are in free and reduced lunch can get fee waivers for those tests that are like, what, $49 right now? They change the price all the time. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, kind of timing for SAT and ACT. Okay, um, so we encourage students to start taking SAT and ACT when they're getting close to finishing Algebra 2 because there is Algebra 2 content on both tests. Um, so that's going to maximize their score. Uh, so for a lot of our students, that's going to be um, March, April, May, June time frame. They actually have an SAT or ACT now every single month with the exception of January. Um, they added a July ACT, or they are adding a July ACT, and this past August, the SAT had an August SAT. So they, there's an opportunity just about every month for one or the other of those tests. Um, we usually encourage students to take both tests um, to see which one might be better. You may be looking at the, the differences between the two, and you may think, well, the ACT sounds like the test that's going to be best for me. I'm not going to do the SAT at all. And, and that may not be true. There are some pros and cons for each of them. Um, there are diagnostic tests that, that different test prep companies will offer, usually for 20 bucks, maybe on a Saturday morning. I know that's what all students love to do on a Saturday morning, but it gives, it gives some very valuable information about which test might be the better test for them without paying the full price of both tests. Um, but, you know, take both, see how, which one is going to be the better one, and then spend that time doing the prep if, if needed for the test that's going to be the better option. Now, all colleges are going to accept both tests. Um, back in the day, there were preferences. Colleges would prefer one over the other. That's kind of been done away with. The SAT and ACT are actually, they've, they've become a lot more similar over the last few years, so there's not a lot of, I mean, there's definitely distinctions between the two, but, but there's the, the differences have definitely, there's not as many anymore. Um, 
we usually encourage students to take the test at least at least once in the spring of their junior year, maybe the summer time. Um, and a lot of our kids also will test again in the fall of their senior year. Um, it's not unusual for our kids to have two or three of these tests done by the time they're seniors. Um, we do offer SAT and ACT prep classes here at Pope. Um, I was talking with Ms. Shearstone, who is our coordinator for all the different prep, and she gave me this list. We are going to be doing classes through Apple Roof. They're one of our partners in Ed. And um, they come and do uh, prep classes here during X Block. Um, so we're going to be doing classes leading up to February, March, May, and June test. Um, she's going to post these um, the specific dates and, and details on how to register for these on um, tinyurl.com Pope Test Prep um, slash Pope Test Prep. Um, about 15 to 20 hours of instruction. They do um, a couple of couple of different um, practice tests on Saturday mornings. Again, hey, <laughs> there's a lot of fun. Um, but they're, again, good practice. Good, it's the more exposure sometimes is the better. It's better for students with test prep. Um, 375 <coughs> to 420. You know, that's kind of steep, but it's, it's some good information. They get a lot of um, instruction time with, with that. Um, and again, for your reduced lunch students, we can look at um, discounts um, for some of those students. Other tests, I've mentioned um, the, a lot of these already. Um, AccuPlacer, again, for technical colleges, that's an option that students may look at. Um, we've got um, a flyer for that for junior advisement, if that's something that your student is interested in. Um, and then ASVAB, I've talked about that. Um, SAT subject tests, this is kind of on the other end of the spectrum. SAT subject tests are um, sometimes required or recommended by more highly selective colleges. Um, again, to drill down into a little bit more detail of what the student knows. Usually they have um, details about what they're specifically, um, what tests they might be looking for. Usually it's two, um, you know, the more math and science heavy schools might want math and science type tests, but um, you just have to look, again, on the college websites, on those checklists of what they're looking for. Um, some schools will say they're, they're optional, but um, to that I would say if they're really good scores, Definitely send them. If they're not, don't send them. Okay. Um, if it's kind of logical, <laughs> but sometimes kids want to send everything and just say it's like, well, you know, for a subject test, if, if it's an optional thing, don't send it unless unless um, it's it's a good score. Okay. So let's talk. Um, I know we've got some abrupt transitions here. Let's talk um, college application deadlines. Um, so with college applications, students are going to hear rolling admissions, early action, regular decisions. So we wanted to help define these things for them. Rolling admissions um, are schools that, that as the applications come in, they go ahead and roll out a decision right away. These are going to be schools that are not usually not as competitive. They're not looking at holistic details. They're not comparing a bunch of kids and then picking and choosing who they want. If you meet the criteria and you're a good candidate, you get it, okay? So we usually try to encourage students, go ahead and apply early to those schools because if you wait too long, the spots might get taken up. Um, so that's um, something to keep in mind with the rolling admission. With regular decision, this is kind of the traditional deadline that we all think of. A lot of times regular decision deadlines are January 1st, January 15th, March 1st, March 15th, um, usually in the spring. Um, with regular decision, um, applications come all in. They have to be in to the college by a specific date, and then they will notify all students on a specific date if they're admitted or not. Um, so everybody finds out all at once. These, if, if you see regular decision, this is a school that's wanting to pick and choose. They're wanting to get all the applications in and then choose the ones that they want to admit. Um, early action is very similar to that, um, except the deadlines are in the fall. Um, a famous one around here, everybody talks about UGA's early action deadline of October 15th, um, which kind of sends us all in a tizzy in the fall. So um, October 15th deadline, and they actually sent us an email just a couple of days ago. They're going to release decisions on December, um, November 17th. Um, I think that's what they said, so before Thanksgiving. Um, so every year it seems like they get a little earlier, so that's good. So you, you apply earlier and then you get a notification earlier, which for a lot of our kids it's a good thing to get that notification and, and to know some, some decisions already. 
Um, you may see single choice or restricted early action. This is a new thing that has come around recently. It's, it's schools that are wanting to offer an early option for students, but they don't want it to be binding, which is the next one I'm going to talk about. But they, they say if you apply single choice early action to our school, then you're agreeing that you're not applying it to anybody else early. It's a way for a student to let a school know, hey, you're my first choice, but the college is not requiring them to enroll. Early decision is also an early application deadline. Again, October 15th, November 1st, November 15th. But if a student is admitted under an early decision plan, it is a binding agreement with that college that you are going to go to that college. Okay? Um, we don't usually have a lot of kids who do early decision because there's a lot of financial pieces involved with that. Um, a lot of colleges will say that they will allow a student to be released from that binding decision if it's not financially feasible for them to go. But the timing and when they require students to commit, um, you're not able to compare financial aid packages with other colleges. So it makes it, a, a, you're really putting all your eggs in one basket with early decision if you get it in it. So just, that's a conversation I definitely encourage you to talk to your counselor about. Um, read up on it. Also, you would want to know the fine print of what does the college consider, you know, something to not be an appropriate financial aid package versus what you might think is an appropriate financial aid package. Conversations to have, okay? Um, and then priority deadlines, this is one I added this year because we're seeing it, I mean, they're, they're all over the place. Priority deadlines are not necessarily an application deadline for, for admission, but it might refer to um, perhaps a scholarship deadline, like um, let's say you, if you get your application in by November, November 15th, we will consider you for scholarships, you're going to have best consideration for housing. So it's not necessarily an application deadline, but it's if you want to get considered for all the good stuff early, then you might want to get in on a priority deadline. Okay, uh, let's talk about paying for college. This is the, this is the fun part, okay? No, uh, that's not. Um, paying for college. Um, I'm just going to run through a little bit of stuff here. Um, ways to pay for to pay for college, of course, out of pocket. Those of us who have deep pockets, if you pay for these crazy prices these days, um, through savings, 529 plans. Um, grants. Grant money um, is money that is either given to you by the federal government or from a college. Um, colleges have great money they can provide as well. It's, it's based on your financial need. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Oh, no. Oh, man. All right. Sorry. Hang on. Y'all let me know if it comes back on. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you while I'm trying to get this thing back on. So for financial aid, um, so grants are money that does not have to be pay, paid back. Um, it's free money that you can get from colleges or the federal government. Um, loans, of course, everybody knows the loans. Loans are, if you can't pay the price and you're, and you're really desperately wanting to go to a particular college and you're looking for ways to pay, you can take out loans. Um, you can get those through the federal government as well, or you can get them through private sources. Um, the private sources are usually not as good of terms as the federal loans, so we do encourage you to look at those first. Uh, scholarships, a lot of people want to think about scholarships. Um, scholarships are money um, that you get. It's also free money, but it's earned. Um, based on uh, merit a lot of times, um, either um, academics or um, athletics or some type of a talent that a student might have. Um, and then work-study programs, um, those are also based on need and the college um, agrees to give the uh, student a job on campus in order to um, have money to help pay for their education.
actually puts a damper on things when your technology decides to crack up on you. Ooh, that's kind of bad. Okay. Okay, so one thing that people want to know is what is my financial need? Um, because that's, that's kind of a nebulous term sometimes, and it depends on who's asking and who's determining that, that financial need. Um, so one of the most important ways to figure this out is by com completing um, a form called the FAFSA. Now, none of you should be filling out the FAFSA right now because your students are not going to be going to college within this school year. It, um, it's, it becomes available October 1st of the school year that your student is a senior. Um, but the FAFSA, is a very um, detailed application, looks at your better your family's financial situation, and it tells you this number called your expected family contribution. Gives you this number that's a lot bigger than you want it to be, but the federal government is telling you, this is what we think you can pay for college, and you're looking at that thing and you're like, no, I can't pay that for college. But that's what they that's what they they figure out. Okay? So um, you can estimate this, though. I, I, I strongly encourage everyone to do this. Um, think about applying for college and paying for college. That's a huge investment. Um, you wouldn't go out and just drop 200000 grand on a house without doing research. Please start researching. Um, go to studentaid.gov, look for FAFSA Forecaster. You can actually go ahead and get an estimate of what your EFC might be now. I think that's a really, really important thing for people to do. Um, and that can, you can go ahead and start doing some research to figure out, okay, well, if this is how much I'm expected to pay for college, where do we need to be looking? What schools can we look at to maximize merit pay scholarships? Um, CSS Profile is another application that you may run across, and it is a, um, it's, it's a college board product, and it digs a little deeper into your finances. Um, some, some, Schools can, uh, they can customize the questions that the, the CSS profile asks of their applicants. Um, sometimes they're asking things that even what kind of car you drive. Okay, so it can get a little detailed. Um, but again, it's just giving that college a little bit more information into what your family's true financial situation is. It's also available on October 1st of the senior year. This one costs $25 for the first college that you send it to, and then after that it's $15. Um, college net price calculators. This is this is a way that you can say, okay, well, here's my EFC. What is um, the cost of the college in comparison with that EFC? Um, I usually tell people just Google the name of the college and then it's, um, college net price calculator or net price calculator, and you can find them. Colleges like to hide net price calculators sometimes. Um, so if you just Google that, you can find it. College Board also has a really good feature for estimating college costs at particular colleges. Um, because the cost of colleges from one to the next is going to be different. They have different price tags. Um, so uh, I would strongly, strongly encourage everyone to do the FAFSA, regardless of your financial situation. Some people think, well, why would I fill out the FAFSA? We make too much money. We're not going to qualify for me. But um, some colleges do require the FAFSA if you want to be considered for any kind of scholarships. Okay? Um, and then it's also the primary way to apply for the HOPE scholarship. So one reason that we tell people to, to do this is, is every college, like I said, has a different cost of attendance. Your, the way the college determines your financial need is they subtract your expected family contribution from the cost of attendance. That's how they determine if you have need. So at a very expensive college, you're going to have more need. At a lesser expensive college, you may not have any need at all. So um, again, research this. Go in and do some of those, those um, net price calculators to get an idea about what you might be eligible for. Okay, ooh, it's kind of hard to see this. Um, sorry, Hope Scholarship, where we've got some great information, um, and, and again, the PowerPoint is on the webpage, so if you need to see this a little bit more in detail. Let's um, just, I'll just talk about this just briefly. Um, Hope Scholarship, um, is there are two parts to it. There's the Hope Scholarship and then Zell Miller Scholarship. Um, <clears throat> the Hope Scholarship is, is based on a 3.0 GPA. This particular GPA, again, is not on the high school transcript. 
again, we get lots and lots and lots of questions about this and lots of misunderstanding. The Hope GPA is not on the transcript. When I'm doing lessons, I make the kids repeat that. The Hope GPA is not on the transcript. It is not on the transcript. Make no mistake, it's not on the transcript. The only place you can find the Hope GPA is on gafutures.org, okay? Um, and students can create an account. When they create their account, they have to put their social security number in there, but in that account and in their little dashboard, there's a little link that says your Hope GPA. You click on that, you can look up your, um, your Hope GPA. So Hope right now is covering about 70 to 80 per, um, percent tuition at a public college in the state of Georgia. Hope money does not go out of the state. The state of Georgia is very covetous of its money. It doesn't want that money to go anywhere. A lot of people ask us, um, well, don't, don't other colleges outside of Georgia take Hope? And no, they don't. Um, the, the Hope Scholarship was created to enrich and enhance the economy of Georgia. So they're not going to let that money out. Some colleges outside of um, Georgia may give the equivalent of Hope. That might be what you're hearing, and that might be what's confusing, um, but it's not hope money. It's money that the college might be giving as a scholarship. Um, you also have to have four rigorous courses. I'm going to show a slide in a second to define that a little bit. Uh, you have to keep a 3.0 in college for hope, and then you can regain it once if you lose it. If you um, come out of high school and don't have that 3.0, a student can earn the hope scholarship after the first 30 hours of, of credit. For Zell Miller, this covers school tuition at a public college in the state of Georgia. Um, you have to have a 3.7 HOPE GPA, and then you also have, a, have to have a 1,200 on the SAT or a 26 on the ACT in one sitting. They don't do any super scoring, um, mixing and matching of scores. You have to do it in one sitting. Uh, you have to keep a 3.3 in college to maintain that. Um, Zell Miller, if you drop below the 3.3 but stay above the 3.0, you you'll drop the HOPE. Um, and you can also regain Zell one time. Um, valedictorian and salutatorian automatically receive Zell. Um, also, over here in the little box, um, so the Hope GPA is only based on four courses. They, they have a little bit of an odd way to calculate the GPA. They only give AP or dual enrollment classes a 0.5 extra weight, but they don't let the GPA go above a 4.0. So it's, if it's a, um, if you make an A in an AP class, you still only get a 4.0. You don't get a 4.5. If you make a B in an AP class, you get a 3.5. But it, I, I don't even know how to answer that question, so I wish I did, but I'm not sure why they do that. But that is what they do. The Hope GPA, it's not where your chance here. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that rigor requirement, the four courses that you have to have that are rigorous. Um, People think, oh, AP, honors, dual enrollment has to be those classes. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, what, what the state was, the point that the state was trying to make is that they want students to take classes that are going to prepare a student for college. So rigor to them might mean algebra 2, pre-calculus, chemistry, physics, um, level 2 and higher of a foreign language. Um, so the majority of our kids get that without even batting an eyelash. You have to have algebra 2 to graduate. Okay, so the majority of our kids are taking this, um, and there are other classes, um, um, anatomy. So there's a list on GA Futures, you can find that in their Hope, um, Hope Scholarship tab, um, and we can help you if you can't find that. So let's talk about the Hope Miller and the Hope and the Zell Miller grant. Uh, these are programs for the technical colleges. I said earlier that um, there's Hope money for technical colleges. With each of these, uh, or with the HOPE grant, um, it also pays about 70 to 80 percent of tuition, but there's no GPA requirement for the HOPE grant. So a student could go to Chattanooga Tech um, if they don't have that 3.0 GPA, and they could um, get um, 70 to 80 percent of their tuition paid for. Now, the caveat, they, they have to be in either a certificate or a diploma program, but Chat Tech has um, created a way for students to take college level courses called technical communications. It's, it's a certificate program. And the classes that they take are English 1101, 1102, Math 1111, you know, so they're taking those college transferable classes and getting the HOPE grant to pay for it. So this is a fantastic option for students who might um, not have the GPA to get HOPE right out of college and they're looking for a financial way um, to get through college. Uh, Zell Miller grant, 
after um, the first term, they will actually pay a student back um, the, the balance of the, the tuition that was paid if they have a 3.5 GPA. And then the Hope Career Grant is um, a program that actually pays 100% tuition if you go into one of these 12 career fields that are in high demand in the state of Georgia. Um, again, that skills gap is widening and they're trying to fill it. So there's some pretty good um, programs. Again, these are technical fields, certificate diploma fields, um, but you know, students interested in computer programming, health science, um, early childhood care and education. So there's some good things. Practical nursing. Okay, these are things that I hear students say that they're interested in. Movie production and set design. That's a big growth area these days. Um, scholarships. Now, that handout that I gave you, there's, there's a bunch of websites on there for searching for scholarships. Um, that's one of our biggest questions that we get in the office. How do you find scholarships? Um, you have to dig for it. I tell kids it's a treasure hunt. You, you're not just going to land in your lap. You need to look. You need to spend time looking and, and, and doing the applications and maybe writing some essays. It's not free money that's just going to come out of come out of the clouds and land in your lap. So college websites, this would be the, one of the first places I would encourage students to look. Um, the colleges all have financial aid pages where they have their own list of scholarships that they award students. A lot of times if you're looking for scholarships, this is where the bulk of the, the money would come from, is from the college itself. Um, and Naviance, which I'm going to show you in just a little bit, um, we maintain a list of scholarships that come into the counseling office. And um, in the college tab, you just scroll down and you can see um, a whole section on scholarships um, that we list in the, in the camp. That when things come into our office, we, we post them there. A lot of the scholarships that come into our office are local scholarships. So those are going to be um, a little, I don't want to say easier to get, but there's less competition. Okay, so um, that, those are some pretty lucrative opportunities. Uh, the GA Futures website, there's a scholarship search there. Um, scholarship databases, again, on that um, financial aid sheet sheet side of the handout, um, there are several websites there. Um, your current employer or um, the student's current employer, like Chick-fil-A, um, or the parent's employer. And then community scholarships like East Cobb Lions Club or the Cobb Foundation. Uh, so we encourage students to go ahead and begin looking now. There are scholarships out there that are for younger students. You don't have to be a senior to apply for scholarships. Um, every scholarship is going to have different directions, different requirements. You just go to the website and see what it says. A lot of times the applications are there on the college website or on the, on the application website. Um, we tell kids to create a resume. A lot of scholarships want to see a resume. Um, and that there are deadlines. Um, scholarships are... are they have crazy good ones. They're, they're, um, they're all, all throughout the whole school year. So um, just to keep up with those, again, students could be looking at those now. And we do have a financial aid on it. Let me put a plug in for this. Ms. Hayes, one of our other counselors, um, is doing this. We, we had this originally scheduled during the hurricane, so we had to reschedule it. And unfortunately, we've got two big things this week, so we apologize. Um, but uh, we do have someone coming from the Georgia Student Finance Commission, who are the people who administer the HOPE Scholarship, coming to talk about FAFSA, HOPE, um, some other things in greater detail um, here. So on Thursday, if you want to learn more about that, come back. And then we talk to students about mailing the list. I'm not even going to go into a lot of detail with this because we're, we're running short on time. But we talk to them about how to create a list, the things that are important, location, your college profile or your, your academic profile, um, what, where you want to go in state, out of state, what are the things that you want? And we talk to them about, you know, there are certain things that are non-negotiable things. Some of you may have non-negotiable things on your list, like you have to stay in Georgia. We hear that a lot. Um, but that may not be a non-negotiable. But, you know, those are important questions and conversations to have with your students so they know, okay, where are my boundaries? And then what are the preferences? So start with the non-negotiables and then start adding in those, those preference type things. So with the academic profile, we talked about reach, good fit, safety schools. Um, reach schools would be schools that would be, um, a student would be in the, the lower 25% of the typical student who is admitted. When you look on college websites, you'll, you'll, a good thing to look for is the freshman profile. What were the stats of the students who are currently freshmen at that particular college um, and that'll give a student an idea about where they fit with that particular 
for that particular application um, group of students. So reach school, um, dream school, scores are in the bottom 25% of that wonderful bell curve. Um, good fit schools are schools that are, you're right there in the middle, you're right there in the averages, you're in that middle 50%. And then a safety school would be a school where your scores are well above the average. Um, we also talk to students about dream schools a little bit more specifically because um, very, very competitive schools where single digit application admission yields, admission rates, um, well beyond, you know, that 25%. Those are going to be reached for everybody, okay? And so we tell students, do not only put reach schools on your list. That is a bad idea. We see it every year. We see students who put reach schools only, and then they may not get into those schools, and then we're scrambling to try to find safety schools for them. Um, because a lot of the good fit schools that might have been a better fit for them may have already filled their application path, or maybe they missed out on scholarship opportunities. So um, building a, a good list um, that's that's varied and not just focused in one category is really important. So um, we tell kids be realistic, but don't underestimate yourself. You know, shoot for the stars. If you've got a college or two that you're thinking, I'd really love to go to Notre Dame, I'd really love to go to Duke, um, go for it, but be realistic. You know, look to see where your scores lie. Um, we have kids who say all the time, well, I just want to apply to a college just to see if I'll get in. I would discourage that. I really would. Um, it's not about bragging rights. We tell kids it's not a prize to be won, but a, a match to be made. Um, it's about finding a good fit. Um, so, and it's also increasing the, the frenzy, I think. Um, so yeah, I would strongly encourage, just apply to those schools that are good fits. Um, cost may make a school a reach school. We, as adults, probably recognize this, but students may not understand that, right? <laughs> Um, so have that conversation with them. Talk to them about, about what is appropriate for you. I know a lot of students and families will say, well, you can go to that college if you get enough scholarship money. But be honest and tell them exactly how much, not exactly, but maybe you would tell them exactly. I don't know. These are conversations you need to have personally with, each, with your students. But um, don't, don't let their hopes get, get up and then... And then they'd be disappointed because something's not going to work out for them. Do your research ahead of time. You will probably have to pay full price at a REACH school. Um, REACH schools are not likely to give scholarship money to students who um, they're not actively trying to court that are going to raise their numbers. Okay? Think of scholarships as a marketing tool. They're trying to raise their numbers. They want to look better in rankings and all those great things. So um, just realize that. Um, we recommend at least one public in-state good fit school. You never know what's going to happen. We tell kids, you never know what kind of thing could happen in your family's life. Even if you have plenty of money, you know that you can afford whatever. You don't know what kind of, God forbid, a tragedy or, or something that could happen in your life. You know, you don't know. You just don't know. Have an in-state good fit. Um, your primary focus should be to find good fit schools that you love and always have a safety school that you love. Don't just put a safety school on the list just because you have to have a safety school because what if you end up having to go to a safety school? You want to find one that you like, okay? So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to show these. I'm going to let you guys look at these on your own because I don't want to keep you here until crazy, crazy hours of the night. Um, but Naviance, Naviance is a, a program that we purchased for the school for students to use. Um, it's it's um, been a very interesting thing for us. Um, Connections.naviance.com slash PopeHS. Every student has an account, every parent has an account. And we mailed, we emailed parent codes um, last spring, I believe Ms. Hayes um, emailed codes to you. So go do a search in your email. If you have several email accounts, do a search in the emails to look for your Naviance code. If you can't find it, let us know. We can give you your parent code to get in. But um, this is a, a website um, that we are using with the kids for searching for colleges, um, keeping themselves organized. We send transcripts through this website. We send all of our recommendations through this website. Um, there's information about careers. This is also a place where they can build a resume. They can do a career assessment. So it's a really comprehensive, excellent website. So um, your students can log in and um, show you their account um, if, if you can't get into yours quite yet. Um, but it's a great, it's a great website. Uh, GAFutures.org, I've talked about this um, several times today. Um, but 
it's not only the place to look up your code GPA, but it's also a great place to learn about financial aid. You can do college searches. You can do scholarship searches here as well. Um, but they might want to take in the ranks on this. Okay. Um, we find often kids may come in and ask for help, and we say, okay, well, log into your GA Futures account, and they can't because it's under your stuff. Okay, so transfer all of that to them so that they know how to use it. We want to try to encourage them to start taking over these processes. Um, college Planning Toolkit on the Pope Counseling page. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's, it's right up there. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a page that we created and wanted to give a lot of really good links. So in addition to the handout that I've given you, there's even more links here on, on the College Planning Toolkit. Um, some things that are pretty helpful um, that a lot of people like to look at are um, junior and senior timelines. There is a spreadsheet where you can put in colleges and put in all the information about particular colleges you're looking for to keep it all in one place. Um, we have a bunch of information about financial aid, um, some information about going on college tours, visiting college campuses, um, and again, a bunch of the links on the handout. So what should students be doing right now? Um, just to kind of get us to the end here, take the SAT and ACT this year. Um, the PSAT results are coming back on December 13th, by the way. Um, they come back electronically to, to the students, and they will have the opportunity to go to an information session during X block on that day. And then we're going to have a parent night that evening in the cafeteria at 6.30. So if you want to come and learn more about PSAT results, um, check the HOPE GPA at GA Futures. We want all students to start a resume and start looking for ways to enhance that resume between now and, and when they start applying for college. Um, I haven't talked about this yet. Um, there is a survey in Malveance called the Self-Assessment and the Parent Assessment. The Parent Assessment is only accessible through your account. Self-Assessment is only accessible through the student account. Um, but when counselors have to write recommendations for students, we need information about them. We want to know what their aspirations are and what they um, are dreaming and doing and, and different cool things about themselves. So we ask that students do the self-assessment and you guys have a parent assessment. You have homework work to be doing. Um, but it's just giving us information about the student. Um, we encourage students to start brainstorming essay ideas um, on our college websites um, to see what kind of essays might be out there. And then visiting colleges and attending college fairs. Um, we um, post these in Naviance. Students can see what college fairs are coming up. There's one in, at Lasseter in March. Um, we'll be posting that in a little bit. And then, most important, just earning the best grades possible. We want, of course, you agree with me when I say that, but we want the students to have the best grades so that they um, go into senior year with, with a great transcript. What should parents be doing? Okay? Do put your blinders on, please. Okay. Don't compare. Um, this is this is and we're in East Cobb. We compare, right? Okay. Please don't compare. Your student is unique. College is not one size fits all. Um, find the perfect fit. Find the right fit for your child. Don't feel like you've got to apply to X Y Z college because your friend down the street is and, and everybody's saying you have to go there. Why are you not even looking at that college? Um, work with your child to find the right fit for themselves. Um, do support and help them organize to create a strategy plan, but don't do it for them. Help them. Help support them. I tell kids when they're in my office, if you're, if you're in my alphabet, I'm going to say, probably in our meeting, um, student, don't let mom and dad take this over from you. A little reverse psychology. I don't know if it works. But I tell them, do not let your parents do these things for you. Okay? And I'm sure you guys would like that as well. But don't do things for the kids. Okay? Um, try to help them start to do these things themselves. And, but don't just say, just do it. But support them. Maybe show them a good strategy and a good way to do um, some of this. Maybe researching a college and looking for the, the um, requirements. Um, do complete the FAFSA. Um, as close to October 1st, 2018 as possible or after. Um, bonus points if you do the FAFSA forecaster on that studentaid.gov. Do recognize and anticipate that there will be def difficult and stressful moments. In this process, it can be it can be stressful, so go into it knowing that. Um, but do help him or her learn how to advocate for him or herself, and then let them do it. Um, encourage them to make those phone calls to college offices. Encourage them to come ask the counselors for questions. Encourage them to send those emails, even if they're sitting over their shoulder, telling them what to say. But I'll, I want to get those emails from the students, and you guys are really good about emailing me and asking the questions, and that's great. But we want to try to encourage these students to start doing that for themselves. 
Um, don't, again, don't do things for your young adult that they can do. Um, complete applications, create accounts like GA Futures, um, check emails, correspond with college reps, and ask their counselor questions. Encourage them to do that. Um, don't believe everything that you hear, the rumors and the myths that you hear people um, saying. We have um, parents will say, I heard this the other day. Is this accurate? Give us the opportunity to help dispel some of those rumors. Um, don't focus on rankings. That's, that's a big one. Um, we would encourage you to not do that. Um, they're not always giving the full story. Um, and don't add unrealistic pressure, but listen and support student ideas about their future because um, ultimately this is their life and, and they have dreams and hopes. We want to guide them, of course. We don't want them to do things that are um, going to hurt them, but, but listen to them and help guide them in ways that are going to let them achieve what they're hoping to do. Okay. Um, just to wrap up here, so junior advisement, we will um, start doing those. We've actually started doing those meetings already. Um, look for that postcard. If you haven't found it, feel free to shoot us an email and ask us what that appointment is. We can help you with that. If you need to reschedule it, go ahead and do that on our webpage. Um, we're going to continue these into February, so they go a long time. <laughs> these are long uh, meetings, but we want to make sure that we are able to answer your questions. So that's all I have. I know that was a lot of information.